to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Handing the mysteries of the kingdom, it culminates into a life and a destiny of dominion. Listen very carefully. Many of you here, I presume, are science-based. Is that true? Meaning you've, have an, you've had an encounter at a secondary level or tertiary level with science-based courses. And if you have been faithful to your study, you will have come across a man called Sir Isaac Newton. Is that true? Sir Isaac Newton postulated a few laws of mechanics I want to use one of them just one the first law we call it Newton's law of mechanics this is what he said he said a body will remain in its state of rest or uniform motion is that true except compelled by an external force to act otherwise are you right on that in other words if I leave this handkerchief here, even after 30 years, it will still remain there. If it must move, a force outside itself must pick it to another direction. If this handkerchief is your destiny and you remain, you leave it there unattended to, that law agrees with the Bible that it will remain in that position and nothing will move it forward. That if it must move forward, there must be a force. Are you learning now? There are so many believers who are waiting for time. Thank you. To change their lives. There are so many believers who are waiting for things to just happen that way. No. It is when it has to do with advancement. Both science and spirituality agree that it will take a force to move you forward. That you do not move forward just by intention. Apostle, I'm tired of where I am. I'm tired of this level. I assure you, no matter the prophetic word for the year, every year will look like the previous year till you are willing to change it. That's why we keep receiving, respectfully speaking, words after words from january of any year till december of that year it keeps looking like the previous year in honor to this law and in honor to scripture that nothing moves and nothing changes until it is compelled by a force now the force that compels your advancement from one level and dimension to the other in this kingdom is called light isaiah 60 and 1 is God speaking to someone tonight? Is it possible to have this in Amplified? I'll just quote it for sake of time. Popular scripture. It says, arise. You know the scripture? Then it says, shine. Why? It says, for thy light is come. Now let me read for you Amplified's rendition. Are you ready? Listen carefully. Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you rise to a new life arise from the depression arise from the prostration that circumstances have kept you for 10 years 20 years and for others even transgenerationary he said rise to a new light why for your light is come not because you are tired of sitting there for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. 
dominion in this kingdom advancement in this kingdom is based on knowledge now please look look up look up please it takes high level spiritual knowledge for you to transit from any realm and any dimension to the dimension you desire just because you have a bit of light does not mean it is enough to turn your night to day now please look up in this auditorium right now if all the windows were shut and you've been here and you are not conscious of time you may not even know if it is night or day why because there is a high level of light is that true if the lights here go off and you put the light in your phone it may give some illumination but not enough to turn this auditorium to look like day many believers have pockets and pieces of light light meaning spiritual truth spiritual understanding but they do not have enough to turn their night today many of you here are academicians everybody here i presume has had some sort of encounter with school we have a grading system in every school am i right on that let's run through them in case you've forgotten we have a we have b we have c we have d we have e and we have f it stops there is that true and for all of these grade levels there are numerical ranges am i right on that i think i'm right that from zero to to 39 is what now please look up if i score 27 did i get zero at least i scored something but is it enough to pass me so the person who did not do that exam and me who scored 27 will stand in the same place do you agree on that there are if your light is so low your experience will be the same as the person who has not even encountered jesus the bible says an heir for as long as he's a child he differed not from a slave even though by inheritance he is lord of all many of us are rejoicing and arguing about life and say life you cannot give me an f i have 35 look at this person has zero this person has two my grandfather had seven my father had 14 now at least i've tried i have 35 life says unfortunately it is still f you want the destiny of an a you can't get the grade of an f no i'm trying to be very simple tonight so that you can understand the power of light and that your destiny will not change just because you are a bit better than someone spiritually just because you are the most spiritual person if we all write an exam here and the highest cost 37 if we are to give a prize for the highest somebody will receive a prize but if we are to grade everybody will still get f don't tell me you have light show me the kind of light you have because the bible says there are many kinds of light it says he made two great lights one to rule in the day and one to rule in the night he made the stars also don't say you have light let us examine the kind and the extent of illumination you have when you go to the stadium in nigeria and especially most developed nations they play football match even in the midnight is that true and when you are in that stadium you there is nothing around that stadium aside from the sky that makes you believe it's the night the the level of light and illumination you will have to trust god for grace even though it is outside you have to trust god because of the level of it, it, blinding light you cannot lift a torch light and keep commanding the darkness in bauchi to turn to day no you want the darkness to turn to day you want the yokes to give way you want a new dimension of grace to be open for you 
you need high level spiritual illumination first corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 is a scripture that has ministered to me personally and is one of the pillars that continue to motivate me to contend for spiritual knowledge regardless the bits that god has done and is doing through my life let me read that scripture for you the bible says if any man think that he knoweth anything it says he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know very powerful scripture if any man thinks that you have caught the keys to prosperity enough you have caught the keys to healing caught the keys to influence enough he's giving you an information that that state of pride is already a report card that you do not know the way you ought to know that means one of the ways that you know the great in this kingdom is by their perpetual desire to pursue more light in this kingdom translates to knowledge it translates to understanding ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 very popular scripture here's what it says the labor of the fool the fool here not being an insult is a description of a state of a man that the labor of the fool weary at every one of them why because he knoweth not how to go to the city please look up let's assume for instance I'm a visitor in your city and let's assume I desire to go to say my hotel where I was kept now if you ask me to go to my hotel now except by prophecy I'm not going to be able to arrive there safely because I don't know the road to the city do you know that I can rig my roll around this church for a long time moving up and down looking confident but still confused anointed but still confused I can roam around till morning you will go to your house and come and meet me here apostle what are you looking for and I'll tell you I'm tired I need to go to my room so I can sleep but I do not know the road to the city it does not mean there is no city you do not know the road to the city here's what Jesus said I am the way the way to any place that the word of God says you can go I am the way to prosperity I am the way to influence I am the way to increase I am the way to power listen carefully I am the way to wisdom I am the way to a happy home I am the way to longevity I am the truth and I am the life Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 I pray God is speaking to someone tonight Jeremiah 6 16 here's what the prophet had to say thus saith the Lord stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the good path where is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your soul he said but they said we will not walk therein rebellion to light I submit to you that most people are the victims of their own destinies most people are the enemies of their own lives why because they arbitrarily believe that magically things will just change in their lives without engaging light I'm here to charge you dear Bauchi state believers that nothing will change in your life just by desire I repeat nothing will change in your life just by desire desire is important but it's only the first component of knowledge the assignment of desire is to plant the appetite in you and the drive to seek for knowledge the bible says in proverbs 18 and verse 1 through desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom but desire in itself unassisted cannot bring you to a glorious destiny light of the world you step down to my darkness listen open my eyes let me see that's going to be our prayer tonight 
You're the light of the world. Please step down to my darkness. Open my eyes. Let me Will you open my eyes? Let me see. Show me what my father did not see. Open my eyes. Let me see. Show me what my region has not seen. Open my eyes. Sing that prayer one more time. Light of the world. You step down to Open my eyes Let me see Hallelujah Can I tell you this? Please look up You can forget what you heard But you can never forget what you saw If you off the light now And I hear you speaking and they say describe the person speaking I may not be able to describe so you can tell me it was this man that spoke and I will believe you can tell me it was this man of God that spoke and I will believe but when there is light with precision I can know can I tell you the truth Habakkuk said I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower that I may see what the Lord will say it is more than just hearing in this kingdom we hear and see that is the assignment of light the labor of the fool weary at every one of them because they do not know the road to the city can I tell you seated here in this auditorium standing and sitting outside also thousands of others scattered across this place there are men and women who desire to make advancement you call it a shift conference i assure you by god that nothing will change until you contend for the requisite level of spiritual illumination i want to make an illustration let me have maybe seven of these gentlemen anyone yes seven of you make sure you are well dressed come over Praise the name of the Lord. Just come and stand for me here. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate them as they come. Please just stand here. I want to give an illustration. Come. Now, watch this. Thank you. We are going to call all these gentlemen different dimensions that you seek. Let's call this man wealth and abundance. Say wealth and abundance. Let's call this man health and wholeness. Let's call this man, what do we call him now? He said the blessing of heaven. Let's call this man favor, beautiful. Let's call this man supernatural power, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's call this man a healthy prayer life. Don't forget what I'm calling you, right? Let's call this man a sound word life. Let's call this man longevity. Alright? So, this is a representation of all the dimensions that you need captured in your Christian experience for it to be meaningful. Because the Bible says, add this to this. Add this to this. He said, if these things are bound in you, it, they will make that you are neither unfruitful. Is that true? Now, this man right here is trusting God for or you are trusting God for this dimension. What did I say you are? Wealth and abundance. This is a major one. Because most people seated here. If I ask you to submit your prayer request. 60% of it is related to these finances. Am I right on that? Apologies for the weather. Don't worry. Someday you will rejoice at this testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, but are we together now? You understand what we're dealing with here? That is that rain? What do we do with those outside? Okay, here's the advice. Let's 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 take a minute to just um, 
work on the various there are thousands of people outside this is what I may advise um, if it gets if it gets very bad the very least they can do is to just stand and at least use their seats for a covering momentarily are we together there are thousands of people I'm not sure there's any place they can be moved into if um, the rain comes but I will advise that if for any reason the weather gets too harsh it may be advisable to make that sacrifice and at least use their seats to get some temporary succor and then maybe for nursing mothers and so on and so forth we may want to move them to any auditorium at all it doesn't matter we have to do that because it's just the reality of the weather hallelujah apologies for the sacrifice it may be a harsh weather but for some of us this is how we started with god though. we started outside and on the ground so this is just a reminder it's nothing new at all we flogged it out with destiny outside on the ground so thank god for what he's done today but if duty calls to go back to that template it is still not an embarrassment because that's where he found us from hallelujah are we together so let me continue so we find somewhere to pray even if we wrap up you can't run anywhere so you are trapped for good hallelujah This gentleman here represents wealth and prosperity. This gentleman here represents health and wholeness. Remember, you need this to live long. This gentleman here represents favor. This gentleman here represents supernatural power. This gentleman here represents a healthy prayer life. This gentleman here represents a sound word life. This gentleman here represents longevity now watch this do you know that every one of these dimensions has the requisite level of light that empowers you to walk in its reality the principles that make for favor is not the same principle that makes for longevity so i can know what makes for favor and yet stand the risk of cutting my life short because I do not have the high level of spiritual illumination. I can be healthy. But my prayer life may be dying. Because the principles that make for an effective prayer life. Are not necessarily the same that make for health. I can eat well. I can listen to the counsel of a doctor. I can exercise myself. Those are the principles that can help my physical body to live long. But I can toy with my prayer life. And with a healthy body, one demon spirit can get you out of the way. Now listen very carefully. Many of us are seated here. Others sitting or standing outside. Can I tell you the truth? Your assignment if you desire to shift to new dimensions. Is to contend with God. For the levels of spiritual illumination that correspond to the various areas of your life where you desire growth. I am a man of God and I desire growth in my church. There are spiritual principles that control it. Intention and desire may not be the only principle. You may need to know the principles allocated. Can I tell you? Do not say it is bouchy, it is a harsh environment. It's not true. Tonight has proven it's not true. You may be saying there is no favor. Nobody wants to bless me just because people are wicked. No, there is something you don't know that has not translated to a grace you are carrying to produce that result. The same person who will refuse to give you resources will go to someone else and be on his knees and say, let me sow into your life. So the person was not greedy. His greed is relative to your ignorance. Is someone learning? Let me ask you an honest question right now. How many areas of your life can you point at? How do I know, by the way, that I am experiencing darkness, absence of results? Very simple. 
the clearest litmus test of the presence of darkness in any area of your life is absence of results and for many absence of consistent results because in this kingdom consistent results is proof of mastery are we learning now when I started with God please pay attention when I started with God I became aware of the sheer extent of ignorance in my life ignorance that came from my background both sociological and spiritual the first thing I did with my destiny was to stand by the grace of God and take full responsibility for my destiny that's what many people have not done the prodigal son had to take responsibility he said how many hired servants as my father and I am here feeding with the swine here's what he said I will arise everybody say responsibility please shout it say responsibility for as long as you are still blaming your father still blaming your mother still blaming idol worship still blaming Bauchi state still blaming yourself for being a northern and or a middle belter if i was born somewhere in london i would have you had you've been angry and finding flimsy excuses can i tell you the first key tonight to rise in light is to be aware that you are absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life the kind of christianity that makes god and others absolutely dependent on the outcome of your life without your personal input is an irresponsible faith practice if anything must change i must know that i am the most active participant in sponsoring that change so for as long as you keep excusing poverty how can they allow sharia no problem is we are like that you will keep giving the spirits that manage that mindset the license to come around your thinking and keep repeating circles of pain and poverty for as long as you get up and you say no problem my own is is just my blood group it's just my genotype that's how all of us are in our family it may be sincere but is that the truth based on god's word you can make up your mind that this pattern of being sick and collapsing in an embarrassing manner must stop and must be on a search for light can i tell you this listen carefully miracles happen instantly but the preparation for miracles take a long time let me repeat myself miracles happen instantly but the preparation for miracles will take a while results and manifestations will happen instantly in your life but the word framework that culminates to that instant result may take a while most people do not have the endurance to build a high level of spiritual illumination that will produce results in their lives back to my example you came here tonight you are seated in this auditorium you are sitting or standing outside and you are saying apostle if i have a chance to talk to you i will ask you to pray for me over my finances this is the area that has refused to answer can i tell you you are not the first to suffer poverty i repeat you are not the first to suffer poverty my bible says the things that are written are for time that they are for our learning so that we through the patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope that means you can go back from scripture and through the life of people who have gone through that experience and begin to find what light did they find that bail them out of that nonsense you will read the story of people you are not the first to be cursed apostles because you don't know my grandfather the day you see him you will know where i'm the way i am i sympathize with you for coming out from such a demonic family but go and ask jabez do you know what it means for your own blood mother to be the one to curse you the bible says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren why 
Then he, he reverses the story back and says the mother cursed him simply because she bore him in sorrow. But Jabez got to a point in his life, he said, I can't keep giving excuses. He says, oh, that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast. Are we together? One thing I know for sure is the day you truly get tired, even the devil will respect your determination. Most people are not tired enough. That's why you see, you may not believe something I'm about to tell you, but pain is a gift from God to stimulate your advancement. There are dimensions of pain that are demonic and pain has its jurisdiction. When it crosses its jurisdiction, one of the indicators that a woman is ready to give birth is pain. Mothers, am I correct? No matter how healthy you are, that pain factor, in fact, the doctors help to verify. There is a level of pain. They say, no, you are almost there. You are not there. There is the one when that pain comes, you will know you are ready to give birth. He said, as soon as Zion travels. Most of you have not been pushed to the world to an extent where you can say, you know what? For the next three days, I'm not coming out again. I must find this secret. The day five of your children return back home with PTA letter and they say they told us to return to our irresponsible father who claims to be a man of God and cannot pay our school fees. It may be a bad scenario but sometimes it can push you and you say do you know what this is it. This is the moment, Lord, I'm going to search for every scripture from Genesis to Revelation that talks about the blessing of the Lord. If I came from a poor family, let a poor family not come out of me. If I came from a family of witchcraft, let witchcraft not come out of me. I am ready to be that bridge that, that ends the old and begins the new. Almost every great man in the kingdom will tell you he came to a point in his life where he said this is enough if the prodigal son did not deteriorate to a point where he fed with swine he would not see the reason to return back some of you the reason why you came for this conference tonight is what is pursuing you if nothing was pursuing you you probably would laugh and say look at people coming to stand hallelujah you run based on what is pursuing you. If it's a fowl that is pursuing you, you can jog around and just smile. But if it's a lion that is pursuing you, if your shoe removes you, will not turn back. I can buy another one when I'm saved. But for now, I need rescue. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place of encounter listen can i tell you everyone in one minute i just want you to think think about the many things that have happened around your life think of the many things that have happened around your family that you know needs to change now not tomorrow think of the fact that out of 20 people in your extended family nobody is genuinely born again there is a spirit that makes sure that people don't get serious with god think about that do you want that to continue think of the fact that there are 15 graduates in your life and extended family and nobody seems to have a job because there are altars that sit down crossing their hands and say we have drawn the line let's see who rises Man of God, think about the work God has committed to you. Is this the greatest expression? Does it look like the vision you saw? Think of your spiritual life. The ups and down epileptic prayer life. Is that a reflection of growth? Think of your word study life. Once per month study. Or study during emergency. Or study just to fish out a salmon. Is that the greatest explanation of your Christian life? Listen, I'm saying this because if you don't have a reason to be angry with where you are, there is no need to go forward. Are we together? 
it is when a baby gets tired of staying in the mother's womb that he starts informing her that I have exhausted my, my tenancy in your womb and it's time for me to find space. Is that true? I made up my mind as a man of God that my life will be a commendable reflection of the life and the expectations of God. I knew it would cost me tears, but I was willing to go through it. I knew it would cost me time, but I was willing to go through it. I knew it would sting my ego because I will come to a point where I will have to be aware of my ignorance. I made up my mind that no matter what it takes, under God, I will not be ashamed if I find out I do not know anything. I will learn with patience and with humility. I burnt the bridges behind me. The narrative that you come from a local environment and a village and you cannot rise to be global. I caused that narrative and I told myself that in my lifetime I will rewrite that narrative. The narrative that you, just because your background may not be the best expression, it means you cannot rise. It's a lie. I'm here to tell, to challenge you. Take all those thinking away and say, Lord, I believe in where you are taking me. I may come from a village and a house where there was no light. We use lanterns. So what? Arise. Shine. For thy light is come. I'm saying this because seated in this congregation, inside and outside, there is a man of God who God has been, the visions God has shown you, there is nothing about you that looks like it yet. And the devil is lying to you and say, you of all people, where are you going to? Look at your brothers and your siblings. I'm here to announce to you that light is a lift. It can carry you from one floor, the same way a lift picks you from the base of any building to the highest floor. We don't have so much of these buildings in Nigeria, but when you go across Europe, and several parts of the world you can see buildings that are over 200 and 300 floors and in less than 10 minutes the lift can pick you you may not even know you are moving you just see the numbers counting the lifting power there, there is a power that the out listen he told abraham he said from where thou art lift up your eyes your legs may not be able to go but your eyes can look once light you can see it from where you are lift up your eyes from where you are lift up your eyes from that one room lift up your eyes having the rent issue still lift up your eyes with 10 members alone lift up your eyes having everybody around your family confused and not knowing where to go lift up your eyes of God respectfully speaking let me challenge you don't say Bauchi is the reason why ministry is not working I was in Zaria for more than 11 years doing ministry in the harshest of Islamic conditions I can tell you there may be something you do not know don't say I cannot prosper here it depends on what you know or you do not know my assignment is to provoke you tonight that it is time to stop giving excuses and go for light. For someone after this conference, you may need to travel out of Bauchi and go and source for materials and return back and lock yourself for the next three days. Don't just buy useless materials. Buy materials that attend to the area of darkness. Are we together? Lord, I found out that this issue of witches and wizards, I go to bed and I'm seeing myself having dreams, secondary school, writing exams, an old house. What am I doing there? You just sit down and say, one day go better. You are joking. The devil will cut short your life. You go and get relevant materials on the blood, on the victory of the believer, and you settle down and flog it out with destiny. 
Why is everybody I'm connected to successful people and yet nobody remembers me? There is something called the book of remembrance. You just don't know how to open it. That night, the Bible says, could not King Ahasuerus sleep. He says, he said, bring me the chronicles. And they found there where Mordecai saved his life and was not rewarded. He said, who is in the chamber? They said, her man. He said, come, what should be done to such a man? And he did that the night her man was planning to hang Mordecai by the next day. Don't say people love you. Has it translated to favor? Let me tell you how favor works. When God raises men, I use this example. I think he was in House on the Rock, um, Port Harcourt. Let me use it. Two of you come, guys. Watch this. Let me show you how the favor of God works. If you ask me to lift this, I may not be strong enough to lift it by my hand. Is that true? But let me show you how favor works. Can you help me lift it? You are not seeing them. But with minimal effort, it's rising. And it's because I'm the only one you are seeing. So you will think it's just by my effort. But God has positioned errands and horse. So they make the work easy. Please keep it down. Can I tell you the truth? Hardship has an explanation. I hope you know. There is a biblical explanation for hardship. Proverbs 13, 15 is the answer to a hard life and the explanation for it. The Bible says good understanding procured favor. It says, but the way of the transgressor is hard. A transgressor is not a sinner. A transgressor is a violator of patterns. There are spiritual patterns that make for growth. There are spiritual patterns that make for influence. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to pray tonight. I came to tell you it's time to be tired. To be tired of where you are. And for the sake of God. Some of you, this, your being here tonight is an answer to mama's prayer of over 20 years. To say, Lord, I may have failed. I don't have knowledge. But can you raise somebody? To that scripture Genesis 1 15 so all of this represents dimensions that are empowered by light now here is a man I love God sincerely but nothing is working in my life how do you enjoy a Christian experience with a poor prayer life poor word life no favor no strategic relationships your health is deteriorated are we together your life is threatened that is not an example of the life of victory that Jesus gave us. He says, the thief cometh not but for to steal, John 10.10, 10, and to kill and to destroy. He said, but I am come that he might have life and have it more abundantly. Why do you need to produce results in your life? John 15 and verse 8, herein is our father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. That means in your bearing fruit, you prove that God is not a liar. John 15 and verse 16, he says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. To ordain means to legitimize your operation. I have legitimized you to go and bear fruit. Galatians 1 24 and they glorified God in me that men will look at your life and give glory to Jesus you become an inspiration to people I will always say it this way you become a living epistle that means if someone forgot his Bible at home he doesn't get sad when he sees you because you are a continuation of his devotional what he did not understand by reading the Bible your life explains it And someone is trying to understand favor and his loss as to how it works you become a personification of favor and God refers you he says you did not understand what I said but study the life of this person he said look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that body I call him alone and blessed him and increased him 
there are men that can personify dimensions in God your assignment is to be so illuminated by the light of God's word that you not only become a sign and a wonder but that your life becomes an inspiration to nations they can sit down and your life becomes a spiritual study project that when the devil lies to anybody and say you cannot rise you are the face that God will use to cancel that thought he says look at this man I lifted him right from your place and you say Lord I now believe help my own belief how about the power of God there are many people who want to see the anointing of the Holy Spirit work in their lives they've done everything they know to do but they do not seem to have had a fair grasp on the operation of the anointing and many people continue to get frustrated and sometimes in anger they just believe that everything that is a manifestation of the power of God must be demonic not so do not generalize frustration you may be frustrated but it does not mean there is no way out are we together if I try to turn the key to a door how many of you have had certain doors where it looks like you are the only one who knows what you do to that door to open you lift it small before you turn it then bring it down someone can come and suffer around that door and it will refuse to open and you come with mastery you already know what to do so just because you are suffering in an area don't generalize it go to them that sell and buy there are always people that sell to sell means the people who will give it to you at a cost. The cost is meekness. The cost is humility. Use humility to buy truth. Use meekness to buy truth. Use honor to buy truth. Buy the truth, he says, and sell it not. You don't buy it with naira and cobalt. Those are mundane things. You use honor to buy truth. You use hunger to buy truth. You use meekness to buy truth. Go to them that sell and buy. There are them that sell in Bauchi. There are them that sell dimensions you have not seen in your spiritual life. Humble yourself and buy. There are them that sell across this nation. There are people who have gained mastery over prosperity. There are people who have gained mastery over character. There are people who have gained mastery over influence. There are people who have gained mastery over their union with the Holy Spirit. Go to them that sell and buy. When you go to buy something in the market, there are times that you go to look for a spare part and people will tell you, oh, if it's for this car, there is only one man we know in this place. Is that true? That was the humility of Saul, the son of Kish and the servant. When the father's donkey got missing, after three days they were tired, they said, let's go back. And the servant said, no there is a man I know there is God but there is still a man because God uses men his system of advancing men is men there is a man whose word does not fall to the ground and as soon as Saul met with Samuel even without talking to him about it the donkey started going back home can I tell you what looks like a mountain to you is only relative to the kind of grace you carry there are graces when you encounter it will trivialize your mountain of 20 years and make it look like a mold hill challenges are not generic they are only relative to the anointing confronting it I can tell you this one by the spirit by the privilege of God's grace I have met so many people in the body of Christ in this nation and across the globe. I am amazed at the kinds of anointings that people carry. Some of them, you don't know them. Some of them are old people. Some of them are not even, they are not even on TV. You don't know anything about them. Phenomenal anointings that they've carried based on light. Go to them that sell and buy. And every time you see them that sell, don't disrespect it find out how they got it and they got the authorization to be the distributors of it a seller is a distributor how did God trust them with that grace I will tell you the reason why many of us respectfully speaking 
especially around the north and the middle belt i did say this in vouch yesterday the reason why there is a slow rate of growth i'm sorry to say it i am family relative to the region it is pride pride over nothing pride over nothing you see i've been to several regions in this nation and there are regions where even if it is a baby that has the solution they can kneel down with us touching what they are looking for but we pray that god will help us can i tell you don't be ashamed of what you don't know open up your heart and learn it you see if you take a candle if i give all these gentlemen candles and you are the first person to have it when you bring your candle and they light it we will not even know whose candle lit which ones are you seeing that now receiving knowledge does not reduce you it only increases you i am passionate about learning and knowledge and i honor your fathers in pfn here for leaving their busy schedules to come it's a lesson for us to learn if the fathers in the land with what god has done and their many years of experience will come and sit down it means there is something we need to learn god is using their life and their humility to teach us something many of us respectfully speaking in their position will not do what they are doing i know has been the plague of the african man i know has been the unbecoming of we in these regions let the man who thinks he knows know that he does not know as he ought to know when i sit down before great people i don't sit as apostle joshua selman i humble myself and i say please i don't know much about this area that area i humble myself like a sponge and i receive with humility when i see people with proven track records and i know they love god sincerely the bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise what you are looking for somebody has it already oh what is a dream and an aspiration for you is someone's current realm of reality i gave them a story in gombe about the first crusade that we had very powerful crusade few people but it was an honestly powerful crusade as far as signs and wonders is concerned because God had helped me in that area very early I had gotten the keys people were healed people were blessed but this issue of finances and this issue of influence I believed I was a sincere man of God and yet not more than 50 people came for the crusade publicity we prayed we fasted as if I would fall down and yet with all of that thing I was grateful of course but I knew this was not the best at the end of that crusade we were owing 150,000 it may not be much now but just rewind your mind to that time 150,000 will be millions now and the sound people were on the crusade ground while I was shouting all the names of Jesus healer provider is the lion of the tribe of Judah and the people I was owing they were there just setting the sound waiting for me I pleaded with them to please for God's sake allow me concentrate and finish this crusade we celebrated miracles and mighty things just I'm, I'm using this to tell you you can be excellent in an area but don't use the area of proficiency to mean every other area is good Naaman was a captain in the Syrian army a valiant man was he but he was leprous don't use the area of success to excuse the area of darkness it is your assignment to turn every area of darkness to become light are we together we finished the crusade I had not paid the small hotel where we stayed I had not paid the sound the transport that would take the people back to Zaria the transport money was not there I had to tell them to call the driver I knew somebody in a Nigerian Union of Road Transport Worker and I said they should call them that by God's grace before they get to Zaria the gates there their money will be waiting for them so the drivers agreed they went and left me hotel bills there the sound people were saying they are not going anywhere they came from Kaduna at least I must look for something and they were serious 
and I stood there. This was the preacher that God used. I said, God, how can you use me to heal the sick and save sinners and you are suddenly acting like you went to bed over these areas? Do you know how frustrating it is to look like you get answers in an area and then in other areas? Can I tell you, most areas of God's silence is the area that your darkness prevails. You must contend for light. I remember pleading with someone who I used to know. I said, please, can you look for 20,000 for me at least? And then they gave me the 20,000. I gave the sound people. And I said, please find your way. You could just go. We'll meet and we'll settle everything there. God is faithful. Let me at least rest and finish this crusade. When I went back, I said, this is enough. I knew that if I continue to do ministry under that condition, one day I will start lying to people out of pressure. And I attacked that foolishness on time so that by the time I start operating the prophetic, I will not start telling people lies. You see, let me tell you, most people you see who have deviated are not evil people. It is their carelessness with dealing with areas of darkness that the devil used as an advantage to now haunt them at the time of glory. So when God is beginning with you, he stretches you to make sure you write a list of the areas of darkness and start dealing with them. Because if you allow those areas of darkness, they will become your areas of defeat in the future. I made up my mind. I said, Lord, you are giving me a global ministry and I'm struggling with money to pay sound people. How are you ever going to build? How are you ever going to preach the gospel? How are you ever going to do the things you are doing? And that was when I had this scripture. Go to them that sell and buy. Don't sit in arrogance. Everybody has the currency to buy what you need. Humility is the currency. Meekness is the currency. Passion is the currency. Pursuit is the currency. With a data of 1,500 naira, you can find the information you have been searching for for years. No one is with an excuse to remain at your current level. Many people have sacrificed to put together those information. I made up my mind and today I give God glory that I made that decision. What area of your life are you yet to experience the power of God? Is it your spiritual life? Is it your word study life? Is it longevity? You sleep every night. <laughs> Excuse me. You sleep every night and they are trying to kill you. Find the key to longevity before they kill you in real life. If they are trying to kill you from a dream, you think they will spare you physically? Most of us, let me tell you, it is our laxity that allows demonic things from the realm of the spirit to materialize. For one year, stretch, every time you lie down, you are in a coffin. Every time you lie down, you are in the grave. What are you doing? You are alive. Go and get materials. Write out the scriptures that talk about long life and study it. That was what I did because I travel all the time. I'm in the air. I'm on the road. I'm not afraid of death, but I know my death now will be a disadvantage to the body of Christ and the purposes of God. But just assuming and saying, no problem, I will not die. Terrorism, wickedness everywhere. I went to fish together the principles that make for long life and I studied it and found it as a key. Women, there are some of you here that cook very well. Once upon a time you could not cook. You know when you started learning. Today if we ask you to cook for the over 5,000 people, all you will ask for is just time and the money for ingredients. That's all. You will not be afraid because you've gained mastery. If you ask me to cook for you now, the first thing I'm going to ask you is how many of you? And then I'll say you must sign that you will eat anything that you see me cook. So that I know I'm not wasting my time. And I will be fidgeting there and praying and say, God, why add this? I hope it's not too early. I hope it's not too late. And if I get sad, I just close everything there. 
just say lord i've done my best let your mercy and favor finish cooking the remaining part for me that is a reflection of my ignorance in that area are we together but you can tell mama please can you cook and mama can laugh and say how many people you say 30 people and she says only i thought they were 100 the size does not matter because light is present they will enter the kitchen and with mastery they can tell you no 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 that size of salt is too much and you are like ah, don't worry and at the end of it it will look as if they measured it with surgical precision this is what i'm trusting god that god will bring you into that you will be so sound in knowledge you will know what to do part time and per season can i tell you the truth please look up some of you after this there are things you will find you will run and go back home and say mama the food you did not eat for me sit back and start getting ready to enjoy it that in your lifetime i will be a consolation a son or a daughter of consolation Also, people die early where I come from. I understand. But there is something you can do about it. Remember, your tears stop when the book is open. Your tears don't stop when you are tired of crying. Your tears stop when the book is open. For someone, God is granting you the grace tonight to open this book. You have opened many other books but not this book you have trivialized this book at the expense of many other books you have opened books of worry you have opened books of pain you have opened books of regret but god is telling you there is only one book that is the cure for weeping he called the light day and he called the dark We're going to do three things very quickly and then we'll wrap up today. Number one is we're going to pray. And then number two, I'm going to speak over your life. I promised that I was going to step out and pray and bless those outside. This protocol while we're praying, let me know if it's convenient. Provided those outside will behave themselves and not run around to come when I'm outside. Those outside, if you are going to behave yourself and stay where you are, and not cause commotion if you will be disciplined outside then i can come out and stand just to honor your sacrifices of sitting outside even through this wind and the rest to speak over your life listen i thank my god today for the times when even through the tears i didn't stop getting light and can i tell you till today in spite of the beats that God has helped, in spite of what God has done, I still remain a student of light. It is a school I will never graduate from. Can I tell you this? The higher you rise, the more you need light. So do not allow yesterday's success to frustrate you into failure because yesterday's excellence will be today's mediocrity. You will need high level transitory light. Light that shifts you from face to face. Go and find light that relates to your area of wealth and abundance. Don't suffer and punish other people with poverty, giving all kinds of spiritual excuses. You can prosper and still make heaven. Lazarus made it with his poverty. Abraham made it with his prosperity. The choice is yours. Get light over your health. You see how the devil is destroying the health of people today? You need to find out the keys for health. Health. They are life to those who find them. And health to their flesh. Go and find the keys that deal with favor. You need this one. Oh. In this wicked world, you need favor. Favor is what gives you an edge in this unfair, tribalistic, unfair, wicked world. It is the favor of God that becomes your distinguishing factor.
that's what took a village girl Hadassah from Shushan and exalted her till she became queen together with the king ruling over 127 provinces go and find light you are in ministry please listen to my teaching that I preached in Gombe yesterday and even this morning find the grace for the supernatural otherwise you'll be ready for empty pews I assure you because the hunger in God's people they don't just want a sermon they want a sermon with proof they want the gospel communicated with the power of the Holy Spirit back in it hallelujah your prayer life remember demons don't die remember demons are spirits if you do not have a robust prayer life you will become weak spiritually to your detriment you will never re really truly be able to be transformed you may never be able to live the fullness of God's life and what of all the arsenals of darkness that will seem to build a system of resistance against your life and your destiny we're wrapping up a sound word life I found your word and I did eat it it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul you need to contend for the word of God man shall not live by bread alone the Bible says but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God it says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness Psalm 82 from verse 5 to 7 and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high verse 7 says but you shall die like mere man like and fall like one of these princes it takes the study of God's word to build that capacity in the spirit and let me tell you this Satan does not only want you to backslide he wants you to die I repeat Satan wants you to die you have to refuse to die he said I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord the evils and the arrows that fly by day in 24 hours is enough to bring you down not just physical accidents the spiritual arsenals that attempt to defeat the believer but you can build immunity and fortification by light and you can live in peace knowing that God has become your defender standing by you like a mighty terrible one has someone learned something today so please hear me when this conference is over that's not the end of it I only came here to stimulate hunger in your heart after this conference go and get teachings write a list of the areas in your life where you have seen darkness clearly take responsibility no more excuses it is not just the government it is not just my pastor it is not just my region I take responsibility and ask the spirit of grace to come and help you become like a spiritual archaeologist in search for truth the Bible says for everyone that seek it find it then when you find it let me tell you what happens you must obtain grace to walk in keeping with the truth you have found because another word for faith is obedience the Bible says the word that we heard the same word they heard is what we heard but it did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it truth itself does not bless you it is truth that is understood and diligently applied are we together now that ye know these things the Bible says happy are you if you do them let me say this before we begin to pray if there is anything at all I sat back there and I listened to your pastor celebrate and appreciate the workings of God upon my life and I was just nodding my head as I was listening to him and I was saying if God's people know that what they think is unique to Joshua Selman 
is everybody's inheritance in Christ. If you can find the requisite level of light. Can I tell you the difference between you and anyone you admire are three things. Number one, the level of light that that person has found that you have not found. Number two, the level of relationships that that person has in his life that reflect the superior belief system he now has. Number three, the level of engracing that has come to that person in honor to the light he has carried. That's what separates men. The difference between you, the former you, and the future you will be greater light and greater power. As someone learned, those outside, you remind me of many years when I stood outside also, standing for six hours at a Reinhard Bonke crusade in Joss. I was already in ministry at its infancy, but I heard that a great man was coming, and I left Zaria and I came to Joss. Outside reminds me of my former self, and I stood there watching a man so humble and yet so powerful i remember what he taught very simple message annoyingly simple and when he was done i remember him trying to take water so that he will minister the baptism of the holy spirit tens of thousands of people across that ground and my eyes were open. That was the first time I saw a visionary expression of the Holy Spirit. I saw a giant bird that was bigger than this auditorium hovering around that entire space. I thought other people were seeing it. I, I didn't come there to show I was a man of God. I came with hunger. Many of you have heard my story. By the second day of that crusade, I made up my mind that I have to find a way of serving and sowing into this anointing. And since I didn't have any money then, I said at least I will sow the seed of service. I was pushing people on wheelchair. To, I was there 3 p.m. in the afternoon, helping to push the people who were going to go to the front. And someone met me and said, I'm not in the committee that should do it. I said, you are joking. You don't know where I'm coming from. And you don't know the hunger that brought me here. True story. As I was moving them, I said, Lord, this is how it will be also in my crusades in the future. Because you see, I know by light that the anointing you honor is the anointing you receive. You cannot receive in the presence of this honor. Let me tell you this. I stood on that ground for six hours. I remember, you may have heard me say in my teaching, there was a pregnant woman who was standing near me. And you know what it means for a pregnant woman to stand. Occasionally she will be tired. She will lean on me. How do you now tell this woman, Madam, please. Just, you look like you are a wicked person. I was almost going to say, why did you come to this crusade ground? But after that encounter, I knew something came upon my life. Because tonight, even though our time is up, but I can tell you something from heaven is going to land on somebody's destiny. For some of you, you are outside. You are saying, I'm far to the gate. Will the anointing of the Spirit touch me? The God that we serve has an all-seeing eye. He does not just see the faces of men. He sees their hearts. If I had said that time I wanted to see Reinhard Bonke, I'm sure the, the military people would have bundled me and thrown me somewhere. But I said I may not see him. But I honor him with all my heart as touching the sacrifice. And something landed from him to my life. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. I didn't just come to speak to you and stimulate an appetite. I also came by the privilege of God's grace. That something from heaven will rest upon your life. Mantles are falling here tonight. Anointings 
are falling here tonight for the kings to be born for revival to return for the kings to arise for revival to return yeah ali ali yo ali yo ali yo ali ali yo oh ho oh, oh. ali ali yo ali yo ali yo ali ali yo now hear me we are going to get into a prayer session right now and please let me encourage you don't allow satan cheat you at this session forget about who you came with and you are going to cry to god father let my destiny become a feast of light from tonight light from heaven as touching the areas of need fall upon my life go ahead and pray outside pray inside pray And he called the light day and the darkness he called night grant me access to the light that turns my night to day man of God are you praying businessman are you praying champion in the making are you praying apostle in the making are you praying prophet in the making are you praying evangelist are you praying kingdom financier are you praying expose my areas of ignorance open me up oh god to the areas I do not have sufficient light. What principle controls lifting? What principle controls spiritual health and wellness? What principle controls prayer fire? What principle controls a healthy word life? What principle controls influence? What principle controls relationships? What principles control character? What principle controls speed? Grant me by your spirit. Reveal to me. Someone is praying. What principle controls complete total deliverance and freedom from demonic forces? When I 
got to a point in my life where I needed structural establishment. I said, Lord, if you don't help me, how much is one block? How much is land? Except you are a thief. And I found Psalm 44 and verse 3. He said, they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their arm save them. 44 and verse 3. He says, but the right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor unto them. When I desired a destiny of color and beauty, a destiny branded with a unique expression of God's grace, I found a key in Job chapter 29 from verse 1 to 4. Moreover, Job said, I remember verse 2. He says, in the months past, as in the days when God preserved me, verse 3, when his candle shined upon my head and when by his light I walked through darkness, I found out that there are two kinds of light. There is the one that shines on your head and there is the one that shines on your path. The one that shines on your head is for illumination. The one that shines on your path is for direction. I said, Lord, give me both lights. That was the light that empowered Job. He said, by reason of this light, his secrets were upon my tabernacle. The young men saw me and they stood. The aged saw me and they bowed their heads. And I tell you, when you find it in truth, they are life to those who find them. Is someone learning? I prayed for one month studying on the favor of God because I knew that if I ever did ministry or lead my life without the favor of God chances of compromise will be very very high and I said Lord grant me favor what is the secret of favor and the Lord opened my eyes to see it good understanding procured favor but the way of the transgressor is hard Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so even Egyptians can favor you and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty Exodus 11 and verse 3 still speaking about favor we are praying I'm challenging you to see the word basis all this balloon success that people rise and fall is because they are not fortified by the word when the word becomes the garrison and the basis of your confidence, you do not need to fear. Because even if heaven and earth fails, not one jot of his word will fail. The Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh, servants, and in the sight of the people. When I found it, Esther chapter 2 and verse 15, the people says, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. I came from a background with my own share of witchcraft and diabolic things and wickedness. And I knew that there has to be a way to keep this wicked spirit at bay. And I found the key. Psalm 66. Say unto God, verse 1 now or 3, Verse 3. I hope I'm right on that. How terrible art thou in thy works? He said, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. When I desired influence, not for the sake of self-aggrandizement, for the sake of the kingdom, I found in Acts chapter 12, the first 10 verses, control there was a key there that God opened my eyes he said that when Peter was bound hand in chain and there were eight soldiers who bound him the Bible says but prayer verse 4 was made or verse 5 now but prayer was made to God of the church for him and an angel came and loosed him and when an angel loosed him there were three gates that he passed. The first ward or the first gate. 
the second word or the second gate and he said he came to the iron gate that opens to the city there is a gate that opens to the city is the iron gate if that gate does not open you can be in a city and yet spiritually you are outside that city the iron gate that opens to the city I also found a key to influence being that in Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1 and 3 that Gentiles don't just come to you they come to your light and even their arrogant kings will not come to your light they will come to the brightness of your rising the consistency of your results can I tell you this please go back home and begin a definite project of searching the truth and the keys and the mysteries that control the various areas of your life can I tell you if you spend the whole 2022 finding just three mysteries that work three maybe your spiritual health maybe favor and maybe the power of relationships if that is the only mystery you find you have made this year a fruitful one because when you truly find it it will show let me wrap up by sharing with you a vision years ago i fell into a very serious vision god was showing me the power of knowledge and the corresponding anointing that comes from it the lord opened my eyes and i saw a giant like a gate it was very ancient and when i looked at it i was zoomed into that vision and I found out that that door or that gate was made of smaller doors. And on every one of those doors, a scripture was written. And I noticed they were opening and closing, the smaller doors, opening and closing. And every time they open, light will come from it. And the Holy Spirit revealed to me that every one of those scriptures and those smaller doors, they represent dimensions of the believer's possibility in Christ every time you catch the revelation corresponding to the scripture written the engracing and the anointing to defend that scripture is released to your life and your life becomes a testament of that profession of faith that means everything you claim to know and you have not received the grace to defend it you do not know it enough remember our teaching on f maybe you have moved from 14 to 35 i congratulate you but it is still f continue moving a day will come your consistency will cross e and c and b and you will now by the privilege of god's grace you will stand tall in the realm of masters he said he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully is someone ready to pray one last prayer lord i obtain grace and discipline to contend for strategic light I obtain grace and I obtain discipline. I'm about to minister to you now. Grace and discipline. Someone pray. I obtain grace and discipline. I obtain grace and discipline. I obtain grace and discipline. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. One of the mysteries that move us forward is the power and the ministry of the anointing. The anointing is able to come upon a man and cause you to rise. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. He said unto me, Son of man, stand up upon your feet. And Ezekiel had no strength. Verse 2 says, And the Spirit entered into me and he set me upon my feet. There are times you want to rise. The desire is there, but the engracing is not there. There are three things that will happen right now. Very quickly, I'm going to be ministering, speaking over your life. And then because of time, I'll just pray generally for the sick and the oppressed. And then because of the weather, I may not want people rolling 
inside and outside so i'll just do a general speaking please forgive me i'm sure that another time i owe about you again this time around i'm sure that we'll organize it you will not be in a place like this we'll look for somewhere bigger and god will give us the opportunity to now minister and prophesy to us in details and god will grant us grace in the name of jesus but my assignment tonight is that something must come from heaven upon your life in the name of jesus christ if you are sick in your body i want you to lay your hands right now where you are trusting god for a miracle you are sick in your body please lay your hand right now you are my hiding place you always fill my heart with songs of deliverance whenever i am afraid i will trust in you i will trust in you let the weak say i am strong in the strength of the lord i will trust in you i will trust in you let the weak say i am strong strength lay your hands there I want to pray for you I believe in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit many of you you have suffered too long with devilish infirmities that must give way right now as I say in the name of Jesus I want you to shout a loud believing amen both inside and outside in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of jesus christ i command every spirit that is back of any infirmity plaguing anyone here by the power of the holy spirit i decree and declare be released right now in the name of jesus be released right now in the name of jesus Right now I declare be healed in Jesus name. Be healed in Jesus name. From the crown of your head even to the soles of your feet. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every eye condition be healed now in Jesus name. Every bone condition be corrected now in Jesus name pains around the joints and around the back be healed now in the name of Jesus blood conditions hepatitis I decree and declare be healed now in Jesus name migraine pounding migraine headache I curse you in the name of Jesus Christ. Blood diseases of all sorts. In the name of Jesus the Christ of God. I bring you life and healing right now. Heart palpitations. Be healed in Jesus name. Peptic ulcer. Be healed in Jesus name. All kinds of lumps and growths around your body. Be healed in Jesus' name. And every other sickness, whether mentioned or not, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I decree and declare, be healed right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is Stephen? Stephen. Now it's going to be difficult to minister because there are so many people outside and um, I'm sure that I will step outside a bit just to speak over them and I don't want people 
we don't have to bring people outside they would mess up this place with because of the who is Stephen but all the same if you go home dirty and delivered it's a good bargain is there someone with the name Memuna Memuna I just heard that name Memuna whether you are inside or outside who, who has that name Memuna that's your name you are a lady Memuna please verify make sure that is that your name my dear my friend the gentleman in white what do you do you're a student I want to pray for you the Lord is raising you to be a savior to your family you believe that where are you from Please don't bring people at random. Make sure that they... Madam, where are you coming from? Adamawa. Your name is Mimuna. Is the mic working? I'm looking at you and in a vision, I'm seeing a road that I had passed before in Adamawa and it takes me to a place, Mubi. Where are you coming from? Huh? Mubi. Am I doing something wrong? No? Praise God. I'm looking at this woman. I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom. But I'm looking at you. And I'm not seeing a human being. I'm seeing somebody wrapped up by snakes. This is what I'm seeing. I want to pray for you. Can I pray for you? I stretch my hands right now. I command that devil out of her now in the name of Jesus Christ out now by the power of the Holy Spirit from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed Jesus I declare complete deliverance for you not only you but this is a family thing just tying people down I release you this captivity comes to an end okay let me just pray my conscience will not leave me if I leave this place and I know that I did not pray and minister to you I'm going to pray right now I don't know how we are going to do it but there are people who have been under all kinds of yokes. The power of God is going to come on you now. Inside and outside. You are tired of certain things. Occurrences of darkness. Let's see how we can just bring a few here. If the space is exhausted, that's fine. I'm going to begin to pray. Inside and outside and the power of God will come upon you to bring deliverance. Even inside this auditorium, I'm already seeing people that the power of God will touch. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare anyone who has been a victim of the operation of darkness, lives and destiny tied down by all kinds of demonic things. The Bible says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and even holiness and the sons of Jacob help that lady. Right now I'm about to dislodge those devils of darkness. At the count of three, I want you to shout, Jesus, bring those who are, on, are under the anointing out here. Are you ready? One, two, three, shout, Jesus. I command every devil, let them go now. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, please help them whether you are an usher or not. Let me just have them out here. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke every devil and every spirit. Release their destinies right now. My God, fire is burning here, inside and outside. All those outside, lift your hands. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. And every planting that is not of God, that devil must give way right now. Are you ready? One, two, three, shout Jesus.
Jesus. Come out of their destinies now. Release their destinies by the power of the Holy Ghost. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. I blot out handwritings and ordinances, ill speakings. Everything that does not name the name of Christ. I tell you, fire is falling outside by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be set free right now. Be set free right now. Be set free right now. Now listen. There are some of you here. As you are standing here, you are representing your families. I'm going to pray for you. The power of God will come upon you. But that deliverance is for your entire family. I'm praying again. Lord, I don't know where they are. Families that have been tied down and will not move forward. At the count of three, that anointing is coming upon you now. One, two, three. Take that grace now. I command every devil. Release them now. Release their families now. Please help them. Up the balcony. Outside. Release them now. Release their ministries now. Sir, what do you do? This man. What do you do? Huh? You are a... Huh? Please help us with the mic. Are you, are you in ministry? Ministry. Your own church? Your own name, ministry? Yes, sir. What else do you do? I'm going to pray for you. Your fashions will take you to places you did not believe. Look at me, sir. You believe what I'm telling you? I stretch my hands and I declare. Let an anointing come upon you that will give you access to the hearts of kings. Take that fire now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never be the same. I release you into a new season by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. There is someone in this room. You are called into the prophetic. The power of God is coming on you. Right now. Right now. Right now. As I'm speaking. Parakatosh Kadia. I open that season for you. Haparinde Kete Malakata. Spring up her wells. I declare may that dimension be opened now. I open the fountain of the prophetic. This couple. Are you husband and wife sir? Husband and wife. Please hold your hands together. I'm seeing there is a strong prophetic grace. I release that grace right now upon both of you. In the name of Jesus, please help her. I decree and declare, I don't know whether you're in ministry or not, but step into a new season of the prophetic by the power of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. That power is still coming on people. I'm still seeing people inside and outside. There are some of you, God has been working on you. You've been fasting and praying and preparing and building stamina. Something is about to come upon your life. In fact, for two of you, you have seen me ministering to you in dreams. You saw it prophetically. It was like an impartation. I'm praying for you right now. Please help them. Please help them. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, inside and outside. Right now, let that fire fall upon your head. In the name of Jesus, help that lady, please. Two of you, lift your hands. These two people, you and you, these two of you. I want to pray for you. What do you do? You are pastors. You are stepping into a new season. Hear me? Do ministry with integrity. I stretch my hands at the count of three. That fire is coming on both of you. Step into a new season now. Take that fire in the name of Jesus Christ. You will never, never be the same by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hey, 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 hey. 
hand. You don't have to come out. Just lay your hand where you are. Or if you are standing for someone, please just lay your hand there. I want to pray particularly for those with growth. Whether you are male or female, you are standing for someone, just make contact with yourself. Please lay your hand there. Let's hurry up so we can finish. Look and leave, my brother, leave. Look to Jesus Christ and leave. It is recorded in his word. outside make sure you are praying for you. Listen to me very carefully. There is power in the name of Jesus. There are thousands of you outside. I want to pray right now. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. If you can, the immediate space outside here. Everyone, everything that is a planting of darkness, yokes of darkness must let you go now. Are you ready? At the count of three, shout Jesus. One, two, three. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. 